Hey everyone, welcome back. It is Icon. Thank you so much for checking out another episode of Esports Analysis. Today, we are not going to be breaking down game film. We are going to be predicting day one of CDL Minnesota. So for those that are new to my channel, 7.30 a.m. of the day, I go ahead, I put out a prediction video. We talk about the storyline. We talk about the bracket, who I think is going to win. We kind of review the last couple tournaments and lay it all out there for day one of the tournament. So this is coming out 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday. We're going to break down the Friday matches. 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time of Saturday. I'll go ahead. I'll review how Friday went. I'll predict for Saturday. And then, of course, 7.30 a.m. for Championship Sunday. I'll put out a video going ahead, reviewing Saturday and breaking down, predicting what I think is going to happen on Sunday. So if you're new around here, this is your one-stop shop all weekend for all things CDL Minnesota. And without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's get right into our first matchup. So first matchup of the day starts over in Group B. This is actually going to be Toronto versus LAG. So with this one, let's recap a little bit. So if you were to go back like three weeks, these two teams, most people would say are probably dead in the water, right? They haven't really shown signs in, of improvement. They haven't been playing that well. There's not much for them to speak of. However, that has changed for one of these teams. So when you're talking about LAG, they did get a victory at their last event, but that victory was over Seattle, whereas previously Seattle the only team that Seattle could beat was LAG. That kind of went backwards a little bit. So LAG did get a victory at their last event. Let's take a look at Ultra. If you think about Toronto, so their last event, they ended up with a 3-1 victory over New York. That's how they started their first matchup. 3-1 victory over New York, who most people would say they're probably one of the best respawn teams in the game right now. After that, they came out and they got another victory, a 3-1 victory over Minnesota. So these are back-to-back -back super impressive victories. And then, of course, that put them through and they ended up losing in a really close matchup to OGLA 3-2. So if we're thinking about just the last couple tournaments, one team clearly has had a better track record than the other. So I'm going to guess that's going to end up continuing. So I'm going to put Toronto through. I'm going to move LAG down to the losers bracket. And from here, who knows? We'll see what happens. But I'm pretty confident in the fact I think Toronto is going to end up winning this first round matchup. After that one, we go back across over to Group A. The next match for the day is going to be Atlanta versus Seattle. And this is just, I mean, this is the easiest match that we've probably been able to predict the entire year. First of all, if you're thinking about Seattle, what team of the entire season has been a bigger dumpster fire than Seattle is right now? And that's nothing personal, but Karma just retired, so they had to find a sub. One would have thought that they just would have played Pander and Enable, but that's not what happened. Enable is still on the bench, so Pander is in, and then they picked up Proto. So now they have that roster of five, but maybe against like some of the other lower-tier teams in the CDL, they might be able to compete. The book is out on that. Chicago has been destroying them in scrims. That's one way to look at it, but against Atlanta... I just don't see it, right? They don't have the firepower. The only place that they probably match up is from that AR position just because Octane has been playing super well all year. But I think 100% of people are going to pick Atlanta to win this one. So we'll go ahead. We'll move Atlanta along. And then we'll put Seattle down in the loser's bracket semi for Group A. After that, we hop back over to Group B, and we have another matchup that's probably pretty easy to predict. So if we're looking at this, we have Chicago versus Florida. Again, CDL Florida is the last time that we saw Florida. They were 0-3 or 0-2 in match counts. They were 0-6 in map count. Didn't win a match, didn't win a map. And this is coming off a really solid event that they had prior to this. So Florida, I mean, they just don't really have much going for them. And then after that, 
Of course, this has been a few weeks ago now, but Mox was benched. Awakening is in. I'm intrigued. I do want to see how they end up playing, how they end up matching up. I think that they'll probably get beat fairly easily against Chicago. But if they go down to the loser's bracket and they play against LAG, I think that's a good matchup for them. How will they play against LAG? What will Awakening be able to do in his first CDL event? So, and of course, we all know what happened with Chicago, right? Obviously, the last event, which was CDL Seattle, Chicago ended up winning. They beat Paris to start. And then after that, they had a very impressive 3-0 victory over Minnesota. That was one that I was really excited to watch at the last event. And Chicago came out and they just dominated that matchup. After that... They ended up playing New York, and again, this is another one where New York has been one of the best teams in the game, definitely top five or six over the last couple months, and Chicago beat them 3-1. Then London just coming off that 3-2 victory in the semis over OGLA. OGLA has been playing really well, so I thought maybe Chicago and London, that would be quite the clash, quite the matchup there, and Chicago took care of them as well. So, um Chicago, we're going to go ahead and put through. I just feel like the th- it's just not there for Florida right now, right? Maybe in a couple months, maybe in six weeks after this roster has a little bit of time to gel, maybe they'll be able to put up a little bit more of a fight. But first event, first matchup for their new roster, I just, I just don't see them giving Chicago a run for their money. So, In Group B, that's going to put Toronto and Chicago through. That's going to move LAG down to the loser's bracket along with Florida. That will be the loser's bracket semi, which will kick off on Saturday. We'll talk all about that tomorrow. Now, the matchup that we all have been waiting for between Dallas and the home team, Minnesota Rocker. Man, I miss land events so much. I just want to say that first. I would have loved to have seen Chicago's fans. I would have loved to have seen Seattle and Florida and now Minnesota, all these teams that were missing. I just wish that we could have seen the events. I can't wait till next year. Hopefully everything is safe by then. But when we come to this matchup, first thing I'm going to say is that for me personally, well, let's go just kind of as an overview here, right? So I believe that most people would say Dallas, Atlanta, and Chicago are the top three teams right now. Second thing I'll say is whoever wins this event is absolutely going to be considered the best team in the game because the top five teams, at least in terms of CDL points, are all at this event. So if Chicago ends up winning this, they're the best team, no questions asked. If Atlanta ends up winning, Dallas, same thing. If any of those three teams end up winning, Those are the best teams. We can just close the books in terms of where we're at right now. That's the best team. But let's think about Dallas because this was so long ago that a lot of people might have thought about this. In fact, it was the end of April. But this event, let's just, let's go ahead. Let's review their roadmap to that victory. They beat OGLA 3-1 on day one, which you might think, well, that's not all that impressive, but this was kind of the start of the new OGLA that we've seen over the past few events. After that, they beat Seattle 3-1. Yeah, whatever is what it is. And then when it came down to the semis and the finals of Sunday, they beat Chicago 3-0, clearly won that one. Although those maps were pretty close, they did 3-0 Chicago. So right now you'd probably say that they're better than Chicago. And then after that championship Sunday, the final, they beat Atlanta 3-1. So when you're thinking about who's the best team in the game right now, now since then Atlanta has won an event, Chicago has won an event, but a lot of times we get in that prisoner of the moment mentality and we think, well, Chicago just won, so they're the best team. Or Atlanta just won, so let's go with Atlanta. But for me, until somebody beats Dallas, until somebody shows or until Dallas shows that they've fallen off, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say Dallas is the best team in the game. So I think that they're going to win not solely for that reason. I think that they have a definitive advantage at the SMG position. AR position is probably a little bit closer, although Clayster and Krim have been playing super well this year. I don't want to take anything away from them. 
So I think just in certain situations, Dallas is poised to be a little bit better. Now, if this was a LAN event, then maybe we'd be thinking a little bit differently because we know how consistent Minnesota has been on LAN. Speaking of Minnesota, their last couple events have not been the best, right? So if we go ahead and we go back to the Seattle event, which was just a few weeks ago, they started off with an impressive 3-2 victory over OGLA, and this was the OGLA that just went to a finals, so this was a super impressive victory. After that, they got 3-0'd by Chicago, and then after that, they played OGLA again and got 3-0'd again. Now, a lot of those matches in those, so a lot of maps in those 3-0's were pretty close, but I don't think most people would say that Minnesota's as dominant or as consistent as they were in the first few months of the season. So for that, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put Minnesota in the loser's bracket. I do think that they'll probably make a little bit of a run. We'll talk about that in tomorrow's video, of course. But with this prediction, look at these semi or these group play final matchups that we have going into Saturday. Obviously, if you look over at group A, Atlanta versus Dallas. I can't wait for this rematch. I'm so excited. Whenever these two teams match up, I just feel like any any matchup between Atlanta, Dallas, and Chicago, I just cannot wait to see. So I'm super hyped for that one. I want to see over in Group B if Toronto's for real, if their last event was just kind of a blimp on the radar. I just want to see how it goes there. Um, Chicago obviously winning their last event. Is that something they'll be able to continue? If we look down at the the losers bracket matchups, how will Awakening fit in with Florida? Will they be able to get that victory? Will they go another event going 0-2 and getting bounced? LAG, will they continue a little bit of success that they had over Seattle? And then, of course, we got Seattle versus Minnesota. We all know how that should probably go. But we'll break down all this, all the storylines, on Saturday morning, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're new around here, I am your one-stop shop for all things CDL Minnesota this weekend. Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Tune in every day. I will set the record for you. If you guys have any comments, this is one of those videos. Comments down below. Where do you think my predictions are right? Where do you think they're wrong? Do you have something different? Let me know. I love reading through these. I love the interaction. So make sure you go ahead and let me know. Leave a like before you head on the way. It really helps out the channel. And with that, guys, thank you so much. I will catch you in Saturday's upload. Enjoy day one of CDL Minnesota.